everybody and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Alicia and I'm the owner and maker of Alicia Be Creative. And in today's tutorial, we are going to be using one of my brand new pattern vinyl that I have launched with Vinyl Gallery. And I'm going to show you how to create this super cute, jolly yet not so jolly tumbler for today's tutorial. So everything's listed in the description box below. Let's go ahead and get started. So we're starting with a 20 ounce skinny from Maker Flow Crafts and I'm going to be prepping this but I also wanted to show you the brand new vinyl that launched with Vinyl Gallery. So these are all the patterns that just recently launched at the beginning of November. They are all created by myself so I did all of this work in Procreate and so these are all designed exclusively by me and you can only get them at shopvinylgallery.com. You guys also know I have a discount code for them so definitely be sure to check them out. I will have that linked down in the description box of this video so you can grab up the other vinyl patterns as well as this one. So of course I'm just going to scuff up the surface of this tumbler with a sanding block real quick and then I'm going to go ahead and wipe this clean with a coffee filter and a little bit of 91% rubbing alcohol. So the prep process for me is also a very important process. I know prepping is kind of one of those things where some people do it, other people don't, and it's really just whatever works for you. I prefer to prep. It's just kind of the step in the process that I've always done. And so it is something that is very much part of my process. So once I've gotten that done, I'm going to go ahead and go outside and get the spray painted black. So now with my spray paint dry, we're going to go ahead and apply our glitter today using Mod Podge, which has really kind of been my choice of adhesive recently, just so I don't have to mix up any epoxy. But we're going to be using Obsidian, which you guys have already seen me use here on my channel. This is from Glitterati Co., which again, I will list and link down in the description box as well. So we're going to be just doing a nice even coat of Mod Podge all the way around the cut from top to bottom. This is going to be coated in all of that glitter um, as sort of the base coat before we put it on the turner for coats of epoxy before we really get into the argyle portion of this sort of tutorial. So I'm filming in a little bit of a new way. This is more of a dead on sort of look. You guys will have to let me know in the description and comments and stuff what you guys think of this. I'm debating whether I want to do more FaceTime, if you will, during the process of me filming tutorials to kind of give you guys little in different perspectives, but definitely let me know if this is something that you like, or do you like more of the top down or kind of a mixture of both and what you think. So now that I have a nice even coat of that Mod Podge all over the cup, we're going to go ahead and of course get this completely glittered. I always love to start with the top and the bottom rim. It just makes it a little bit easier. Those are usually the two edges that the Mod Podge will start to either pull away from the edges or they will start to kind of dry the quickest for whatever reason. So I always like to start with the top and bottom and then fill in the center section with the glitter that I'm going to be using. So we're going to go ahead and this is now fully glittered. I'm going to let this dry for a couple hours, brush it off. And then of course I will spray seal this with a clear gloss spray paint before I put it on the turner for two full coats of epoxy until smooth. Okay, so now we're in Cricut Design Space, and I'm going to show you how to utilize the template. It's going to be super easy and simple, I promise, but I figured I would do a portion of the Cricut Design Space work with this tutorial as well. So I got the template for the Argyle from LB Creates, and so I will link and list the exact template that I'm using because I'm using it for a 20-ounce tumbler. I'll list that down in the description box. LB Creates has a lot of different patterns that you can utilize, you know, things from buffalo plaids to tan grams to the Southwest style. There's so many different designs and patterns. I definitely encourage you to check her out if you are someone who really is into different glitter patterns. So what I'm going to do first is, of course, I've already utilized this pattern previously. And so I already have it saved and uploaded into my computer. So I've already uploaded it into Cricut Design Space. And when you upload it into your canvas, you'll know that it comes with an attachment. So the attached piece just essentially tells you what you need to size your template to for the size of your cup. So that's very important to pay attention to. It also comes with PDF guidelines to um, answer any of your questions with regards to, you know, common questions and mistakes sometimes people make when using these files. So the first thing we're going to do is I want to, I want to ungroup these. Okay. So I have this selected. I'm just going to go up here to the ungroup. That's going to ungroup the actual template from the actual wording. So the wording, I'm just going to go ahead 
and get rid of. And so before you do though, do make sure that you already have what size you need to create your template to, okay? So we're gonna work just with this piece and I'm gonna go up here to the top for sizing. I'm going to unlock this because it will not be proportional. And we are going to make the width and height the exact measurement. So something you can do and what you might wanna do just dependent on the amount of you know coats of epoxy you've done is definitely still measure your cup and make sure that this is gonna meet all the way around because it could be slightly off just based on the thickness of your epoxy coats. So I always like to double check my sizing before I go and cut the recommended sizes for my template. Now, if I was going based off of just the traditional 20 ounce skinny, um, you know, right off the stainless steel base and applying my glitter that way, then I know I have, you know, I can use those sizes. But obviously, once you get into adder, adding your glitter and adding epoxy, if you're doing it the same style and way that I'm doing this, then you definitely want to make sure that you size your cup and that you remeasure just to make sure that this pattern is going to fit all the way around and not have any issues or overlap. So I'm going to go ahead and quickly change my measurements here. So it's going to be 9.21 wide by 8.125 in height, okay? After that, I'm just gonna lock this just so I don't accidentally mess with the proportions there. And this is literally all I'm gonna do. So I'm done with the Argyle pattern. And so we're gonna set this aside. And then the last thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab a shape. So I wanna also cut some lines for, um vinyl. So I'm going to unlock this again. And you guys know, typically the measurement that I like to make my vinyl lines is I always do 11 and a half wide by for this template. I think that I'm going to go with 0 0.20 is probably going to be a good height size. It's thick enough that it'll cover this overlap, like cross hatching across the Argyle pattern and um, thin enough that it's not going to be, you know, too too weird looking. So I am going to duplicate this. One is going to be black. And then the other is going to be green. So for the sake of me not confusing things, I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm also going to change my template to blue. And the only reason I'm changing it to blue is because I will be printing that or cutting that on my actual vinyl that we're going to be using from my line. So I just want to make sure that it doesn't try and cut on the same mat as one of these two other colors. So I'm going to go ahead, though, and duplicate this multiple times. We'll start with black. I always just cut a bunch of extra lines. You can obviously do as many as you want. Don't feel like you, you know, you can do really as many as you want. And we're going to do the same with the green. I'm just going to duplicate this a bunch of times. Again, doesn't really matter because I saved the additional vinyl lines that I have. But if you wanted to, you could, you know, determine how many cross lines that you'll need. And I definitely will kind of let you know how many pieces of vinyl I end up going through as we get into applying all of this vinyl work. So all I have to do now is go ahead and click make it. And then I'm going to send this off to my Cricut machine and get this cut on black vinyl. I have some green holographic vinyl I'm going to use that's sparkle. And then obviously, of course, use my pattern vinyl to cut out the actual Argyle template. Okay, so here is my pattern vinyl. I've cut all of the items that I've needed that I need to cut for this argyle that we're doing. And so you can't really see it obviously on here, but I do have the argyle template already cut on this vinyl. And so I'm just cutting away most of the excess here and just using that. I can use that for some pen wraps and things like that. And so now we're going to go ahead and we're going to remove what is the outer square, if you will, or rectangle for this template. After I've removed that, what I will do next is we're going to apply our transfer tape directly on top of this. So currently right now I am using just a large sheet of my transfer tape here that I'm just going to cut to size. I want to make it as close onto the template as possible. I will be doing a lot of trimming and things because this is meant to be a wrap and because it is an argyle and it's very specific, it's meant to meet up. It's very important that I make sure to get this on the cup straight and 
The way that I find is easiest for me to make sure this gets on straight is to make sure that I've cut this as close to kind of the starting mark of where I'm going to be beginning to adhere it to the cup um, as possible. So you'll kind of see what I mean. Like I'm going to go in with scissors after I get this on, after I get the transfer tape on, and then I'll actually use my paper cutter to trim a nice straight line. It just makes things a little bit easier when I go to line things up. Obviously when doing something like a full vinyl wrap, if I just was going to use the entire 12 by 12 sheet, it's a little less of an issue because if it goes on a little wonky, if I use the whole sheet, I probably would be fine. Sure, the seam would meet up but that really wouldn't bother me um, because I typically don't care in this kind of template though it is very obvious if the seam does not meet upright because you'll have a very obvious kind of misalignment of that final triangle section or that zigzag section when it meets on the other side of the cup so this will make sense once I get this actually applied to the tumbler but that's just those are kind of just my little tips and things that I've kind of learned as doing these types of templates um, that have really kind of helped me to make sure or minimize the opportunity of this going on kind of wonky. And obviously the last thing that I'll tell you for this and probably will tell you again in the next section when I apply it is to measure multiple times before you start to wrap it around. So let's go ahead and get this wrapped on the cup. So here is my tumbler here. Of course, the first thing I'm going to do, it's already gotten a couple coats of epoxy. It's really actually smooth. And so I'm just going to do a little bit of sanding on the top rim, which is super rough, and a little bit of light sanding on the bottom rim. I didn't want to do too much because that bottom edge probably could have used a third coat. So I was just very gentle with that section because I didn't want to accidentally sand through my black glitter and epoxy and end up with, you know, the stainless steel exposed. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and get that clean off and then we're going to get into applying this wrap this argyle template to the cup okay so i'm going to use my cup cradle of course to really help guide me and make sure that i can get this template on straight and so just like i would with a full sheet of vinyl i'm going to go ahead and peel the backing away just a small section of that and then cut this little edge off with my scissors we're going to use this kind of inch to half inch section here to apply directly to the cup Make sure that you have your template facing the correct way because obviously this is a template that would look weird if it was upside down. So definitely make sure that you are putting this on the correct way. I'm going to adhere that one side in what I think is a straight line. Hope that it is. And then see that everything kind of lines up. I did do this part kind of multiple times because, again, it will be very obvious if those diamonds on the other end do not meet up. And so I really am pulling and stretching and making sure that this is going to fit for the final time before I go ahead and start to actually get the rest of it applied. So now that this is looks pretty good, I think it's going to meet pretty nicely on the other side. I'm going to use a combination of both my hands and my little felt tipped squeegee tool to get this applied. So you guys have seen me do this before. What I would say though, when you're doing this particular template, because you're applying the vinyl directly over an already epoxied cup, you're probably going to run into a little bit of what I did which is perfectly fine it's very easy to fix but on the very edges of where the vinyl touches the cup you might get a little bit of puckering and kind of wrinkling not horribly but if you really focus with your fingers and your squeegee tool on the centerpiece and really don't don't pay attention to those edges as far as those little crinkled pieces not laying flat because once you've gotten the entire thing wrapped you will be able to go back and either use your squeegee tool to just you know push out and flatten that section or use your fingers or even a little bit of heat from your heat gun to get that to lay flat. So the only reason it does this is obviously because the epoxy has given that layer of thickness. And so you now have a curve that you're working on as you get towards the bottom or the top of the cup versus that flat surface. So I've met this on the other side and I'm just going to peel back the one side of the transfer tape so I can lay down the final piece here before we can go ahead and get the entire piece of transfer tape removed from the vinyl here. You also will note that I didn't remove any of those diamonds that are actually not going to be present for this design. I find that it's easiest to do the entire wrap this way and then go in and remove the diamond pieces. Yes, it does waste vinyl, but for me, I would much rather have a really flawless and seamless application of the vinyl than remove all the diamond pieces that I that won't be part of the design and potentially risk the pieces 
as I'm applying it getting applied kind of wonky. I don't know. Certainly to each their own. For me, I just really felt like it made more sense to do it this way just because in my head, I'm pretty good when it comes to vinyl wraps. And so I didn't want to disturb, you know, that sort of possibility of it going on weird or getting wrinkled and things because I was removing sections. So now we're just going to go ahead and get the diamonds removed every other. As you can see here, really super simple, just kind of starting with that seam area and then obviously leaving the next set of diamonds, then going to the third set and removing that and doing that all the way around the cup. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and apply the vinyl line. So I have my vinyl cut on this holographic sparkle vinyl that I've actually had for quite a while. It's a Cricut vinyl. And then I just have some traditional black vinyl that I'm using as well. So what you're going to do is you're going to take one of the strips of your vinyl. And I like to start with the seamed edge. And essentially what you're doing is you're placing that vinyl line sort of at that diagonal right in between all the different diamonds. So because I'm using a combination of both black and green, you'll see that I'm skipping around row before I go in with the next section of green and that's because I'm doing more of a cross hatching pattern and when you look at this in the final look and kind of after I've gotten all this vinyl applied you'll see that it creates larger diamonds because I did the every other versus doing every single another way that I've done this in a cup that I did in my Facebook group same sort of pattern and style um, just used a different glitter and a different vinyl is that I did um, the same um, vinyl lines and then I put a smaller line on top so sort of like that offset look that I showed you in my last tutorial sort of like that look but with vinyl if that makes sense so I'll insert a picture right here of what that looks like kind of the same pattern and go about but there's a lot of different ways obviously that you can apply your vinyl but I really did like how this look came out because when I finish all the vinyl again like I said you're going to see kind of those larger diamonds I do wish that I would have probably gone with something other than black because the glitter was black I probably should have gone with like a red or something something that just gave a little bit more pop because the black vinyl did blend in a little bit more than I would have wished it to but again I have plenty of pattern vinyl that I could certainly do this with if I want to recreate this and maybe another version with different color vinyl lines so I'm just going to continue to kind of go back and forth after I'm done with the green you're going to see me go in with the black so you go one way all the way across and then of course now we have to switch direction so we can do the cross sections on the in the other direction if that makes sense so it makes like a I guess it would be considered like a lattice pattern right kind of like that that X pattern all the way down and are across the entire tumbler and that's just going to cover up all of the vinyl so all edges of the glitter all edges of the vinyl will all have a piece of vinyl that is touching the edge in sort of the cross section between the vinyl and the glitter etc so just going to continue this. I'm not going to sit here and make you watch the entire thing. Of course, that would be cruel, I feel like. But after I've gotten this done, I am just going to trim up the edges and then we're going to move on to the next step. So after I've done, I'm done with all of the vinyl lines, I'm going to go ahead and apply a very thin layer of polycrylic. So you guys know that I like to use the Minwax polycrylic in the green can. I usually use the satin or gloss one. And that is what I use to make sure that I don't have any lifting of some of my more, you know, troublesome vinyl. So things like textured metallic, holographic, things that sometimes will repel your epoxy. Or if I'm concerned that I might have an issue with, you know, some sort of lifting happening during any sort of the process. So I'm going to let that dry and then put that back on the turner for another coat of epoxy. So after I've done that, I'm going to go ahead and do the power wash to sort of create a bleach spot in the center section here. So I'm going in with my Dawn power wash and then I'm going to go in with my flat white spray paint. So I just did a couple spritzes kind of towards the outward section, making kind of a circle. It's going to be a large section. Then I went over with that matte white spray paint and I'm going to show you it here kind of really bad. I wasn't even close to the camera, but you kind of get the gist of it. I did end up going in with another just quick burst in the center of flat white spray paint when it was dry. So now it's time to clean this up. So I'm going to use some rubbing alcohol and acetone, starting with the acetone first to really clean off any of the overspray in a lot of the areas. You really want to take your time with this because you want to make sure, especially if you're doing something that's, you know, on this black base, it's going to pick up any of that leftover spray paint you don't want. So I'm taking a paper towel or coffee filter, whatever you have, and going back and forth with the acetone, which really removes all of the paint and then following up with alcohol, which will then kind of remove and distress it a little bit further. So this is what it looks like so far. I end up then putting the decal on which you're going to see me do next and 
I did end up going back in afterwards, which I don't know that I capture in this video, and kind of shaping up my oval here to more of a circle after I get the water slide decal placed in the center of this this bleach spot here. So some people do like to put their cut back on the turner and do one more coat of epoxy so they have a glossy surface. I just take it to sort of my spray booth and just hit it with a little bit of clear gloss spray paint. That usually is a way that I can work around having to not have to go through another full coat of epoxy. And then that usually helps. So I'm going to get this decal um, applied. This is a water slide or PNG file that I picked up from Creative Fabrica. I just kind of size it to the area that I figured that I would be using. So it's about 3.25 inches wide and that was kind of all I needed for kind of this general 20 ounce tumbler. So I'm going to submerge that in my water which is uh, pretty warm water. Not like hot but obviously definitely um, above room temperature and I'm just going to get this fully soaked until the backing starts to remove itself. So anywhere from 30 seconds to a minute just depending on your you know, water slide paper. I do use Hippo water slide paper. That is typically my paper of choice. And um, we're just going to get this applied. So depending on what kind of printer you have um, with your water slide, if you have an inkjet like myself, you do need to spray seal this. So you need to give it a few good coats of clear gloss spray. But if you have a laser printer, you obviously don't need to seal your water slide. So it's really all dependent on what you have as far as printer goes. So once I get this applied, I just use my squeegee to kind of get any of the water or air that may be trapped under the decal out. Then take a paper towel and just gently dry off any of the excess water over top. Kind of dry around the edges. That way I can let this dry for just a few minutes before I go in into adding our other decals here to the cup. Okay, so I did not show this as part of my Cricut Design Space portion, but I decided after the fact that although I really love the sparkle of the black glitter, I still wanted to add a little bit more because a lot of the you know, kind of lights and things that are part of the original vinyl pattern design really did kind of get cut off that I was hoping that would be a little bit more prominent. So I decided to go in and we're going to make our own set of Christmas lights here. So this is all this like sparkle vinyl from Cricut that I have on hand. And so I just found a light bulb or light image, light bulb, Christmas light image from Cricut Design Space just in the images feature. And now what I'm doing is just going around, just choosing different sections. You'll see that I'm not putting the light bulbs directly in the middle of the black spot. In some I will and others I won't because we're going to then create our own sort of string of lights with just a... Um, acrylic paint pen to draw on our lines if you will. So once I feel like I'm satisfied with the amount of light bulbs that I have on there I'm going to go ahead and grab my paint pen. I originally was thinking that I was going to go in with white but my white paint pen really was not that exciting. It didn't look that great. I wasn't really thrilled with how that was looking so I ended up switching to a silver paint pen which definitely looked a lot better. I don't know if this is just running out of paint which is very possible or what the case is. I really need to get those Posca paints actually because I really have heard that those Posca paint pens really do look super vibrant. So I'll have to try those out and let you know let you guys know how I feel about those. But I ended up grabbing a silver paint pen. It's just a craft smart, smart paint pen. Grabbed it from Michaels. And I'm just creating sort of this line work of lights. So the way that I'm doing this is I'm trying to connect all of the lights together. And so as I connect them, as I connect one to the next, I like to make like a squiggly line as I go from one to the other just to represent like the tangling of the lights. And then I go from that same bulb to the next bulb until I get all the way around the cup, if that makes sense. So I'm just going to continue to do this again. There's no real right or wrong reason. You also could get this cut out of vinyl, but you would have to do a lot of kind of work on your canvas in order to make sure that it all fit well, if that makes sense, um, unless you just used a cut image um, from Cricut Design Space where everything's already connected. So I hope that makes sense. I'm sure that was super confusing. Anyway, so after I'm done with that, I realized that I had attached the lights or the string to the bulb <laughs> upside down. So after I'm done getting sort of the lines done, now I'm going to go back and make sort of that little small rectangle that is sort of the top of the light bulb 
for each of the Christmas lights just to kind of give it more of that, you know, true aesthetic of a Christmas light or Christmas bulb, if you will. Going to do that all the way around the cup. And then that was really it. There wasn't much more work I needed to do. You'll notice too that I did clean up the front section there. I wasn't really too thrilled with how large that oval spot was with the bleach spot. So I ended up going back in and just sort of condensing that circle. Still have a lot of that power wash sort of prominent, which I love. It kind of gives like a real cool and funky distress look but definitely let me know what you guys thought of today's tutorial if you loved it which pattern vinyl of my new line are you going to grab definitely let me know that down in the comment section as well and of course as always when you guys have questions you guys have suggestions for future tutorials leave that down in the description box i love or in the comment section chat with me i love engaging with y'all and i really hope that you guys did truly enjoy today's tutorial Definitely, if you did before you leave, give this video a huge thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel. I upload videos every Tuesday and Saturday, and I cannot wait to see you in the next one. Bye!